Okay, now let's talk about combat. Combat in Civitas 2230 is a late game move. It's something that happens later on in the game due to the fact that it's very expensive to enact policies that will start combat. It's also quite it's also quite tricky to get going when you've got a CN player that has lots and lots of ion. So I'll, I'll explain this properly. When 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 you're doing combat, you are committing ion to your attack. Remember, ion is energy in the Civitas universe, so you're needing energy to form to form your attacking moves, whether that's a ground attack or an orbital attack. There are two types of attacks, ground attack and orbital attack. So when you when you commit ion to that, you don't want to be coming up against an adversary that has 30 ion, which is what the CM player starts with. In this scenario, this the CM player, we're a few we're a few game rounds in and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ion with an Ihelion player. And we've got two ion. So we're not looking that great at the moment for Civitas Tau to be making any attacks. But we could attack other players or we could attack with special character cards. Now, if we look at this situation, we've got Detective BR7668. Now, BR7668 BR7 is an elite cop, transhuman elite cop, and goes into any zone. So there they are there, looking absolutely rad. And then if we have a look here, it says place this CN expat into any inactive or active zone. If that zone has corruption, that policy is cancelled immediately. So this elite cop removes corruption from a particular zone. Um, you may pay one iron and one ether to cancel the policy suicide mission. So the policy suicide mission is a is a really, really tricky card that when played against you can be devastating. But if you pay one iron and one ether and you have this CN expat placed in a zone, you can cancel the policy suicide mission. Also, this CN expat will, will trigger combat if a rival player attacks any hex in your Civitas with SPs or drone. Now, you can... You can um, trigger combat with them and when, when attacking a rival this turn they may join the attack and this card counts as five extra ion for the attack now attacking and defending are, are much the same thing so so the if a rival player attacks you and you defend you are also attacking because you're defending back and your defense is a form of attack so for five extra ion will will be allocated for that attack so say for example we we are being currently attacked by Civitas Nihilium. Civitas Nihilium is attacking us with ground troops. They're sending in something. Let's say Civitas Nihilium has this hex here, the military facility right here. So let's say they have this military facility. Let's flip it and put the meeples on. Okay, so they're, they're targeting a rival and doing an attack. So it says here, you may target a rival's hex and using up to four of the SPs placed here perform an attack. If successful, steal any unit from that rival's hex and return the SPs back to this hex. If unsuccessful, your SPs go to the stash. So very simply, in this example, Bastion Heights is going to attack this inactive facility over here. And we're going to send some SPs over to steal these two material cubes. We're just so it's always one unit for one unit. So an SP may only steal one material cube, and this SP must may may steal one one material cube. We could take these SPs over and steal these SPs, and we could have them. They could be ours. We could take them if we like. But in this scenario, we want to keep those two SPs back. We want to keep them back just to kind of stay there as they are because we feel confident that we're going to be able to get these these material cubes. So we're going across. The SPs are. Uh, when stealing, they help when stealing because it's one unit for one unit, basically. That's what that's what the rules are for SPs attacking. Now, when we go over to it and we attack this, so we announce our attack during our hex abilities section. So we're getting we're getting our hex bonuses and we're gaining that when we gain hex bonuses and we're taking that on in this part of our part of our move. So over here on our our receive hex and see an expat bonuses section, we can actually take our hex bonus which is a hex ability on this card as well. And we could say, right, we're going to use this. We're going to target a rival's hex and using up to four of our SPs placed here, we're going to perform an attack. So we suggest that we put our SPs forward like this, and then we can seal the ion that we're going to use to attack them with. Now we've noticed down here, ah, ha, ha, they've only got two ion. So we're going to attack them with, we're very confident, one, two, three, four, five. We're going to attack them with five ion. So we put that five ion into a closed concealed fist under the table. We take that five ion. Now, it looks obvious to the other player how much ion we've taken and we've concealed, but they have to be quick to notice it. 
So it's like spying, right? That's thematically, we're basically spying on what the other person's doing. So the other person goes, okay, I'm going to take both my eye on like that. And then they they reveal their, their eye on. So this guy says, okay, I defended with two eye on. This guy says, okay, I, I attacked with, with five eye on. So the five eye on comes forward like this. And just before, that's gone into my hand, just before the components are stolen, just before that happens, the Civitas Tau player who's defending says, uh, 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 guess what? I've got this cop. And they say, if attacking a rival this turn, BR7668 may join the attack and this card counts as five extra ion for the attack. So it's been crushed. This guy's come in. So five, six, seven. They've defended with seven and they've defended this situation. So these guys, these guys now actually die. And the committed ion is taken by the Civitas Tau player. So the Civitas Tau player gets the ion and the SPs go to the stash over here. They go to the stash because they're dead. Now, you do have facilities in the game that will enable you to, to actually take these guys as prisoners and put them in your CRC and they become they become citizens. You kind of brainwash them and indoctrinate them and they become part of your of your Civitas. But in this scenario, they go straight to the stash. And because now we now we now have um, no more no more SPs on Bastion Heights, this hex will now become inactive. But just because it's inactive in this round doesn't mean that they don't that they have to then rebuild it all. They just need to place the Civitas Nihilian player just needs to place two more extra SPs here to get it active again. But they can't do that until it's their turn. So that's that's the that's the, the problem that happens when you're attacking you take these huge risks to attack because you never know what these certain cn expats might be able to do now the cn player might look at this situation and say well i can actually see that you've got that cn expat the blue meeple i'll just put him over here like this i can actually see that you've got him why are those two being selected anyway i can see that you've got him there so i'm not going to attack you and that's the kind of cold war situation of the attack and how that works so that's land attacks that's ground attacks using sps now there are other cards that will enable you to do different things you've also got the hunter killer drones for example now the hunter killer drones the ion to enact this policy is placed onto this card and contributes to the attack defend or combined with additional policy action so attack target any rival policy see an expert or or resource and attempt to steal it so you get a resource for attacking with just the hunter killer drones defend any non-orbital attacks from your rival players this policy is infinite so you would then be able to defend with the hunter killer drones and you would have the three iron on there to contribute to the defense of the attack against the person that was attacking you now what it says here where it says um contributing policies or additional policies that that, that combine with the hunter killer drones those are these those, those are these cards so political hostage you must have active hunter killer drones target arrival and attack with drones this policy cards counts as 10 extra ion for the attack if you win you may steal any one active cn expat from the target player holding them an inactive until a ransom is negotiated sold to another rival or you choose to destroy them and gain three rep shuffle this policy back into the bidding deck whoa so the process would be you hold them you say to the other player well you can get this person back but you've got to give me five ion they're like no way or you say okay five ion and two ether what what are you making it harder you're like yeah this is why that's how i roll i'm a hard negotiator they're like oh i don't know and then the other player's like i'll give you i'll give you three ion and two ether and you're like sold and you give the cn expat to the other player who then puts that cn expat into their crc and then brings out their abilities on the next turn or you can choose to just send them straight to the discard. So they, go, they get discarded. They don't even go to the draw pile anymore. They leave the game. They are destroyed. And their, their meeple goes to obviously the pool. But their card is, is sent to the game box. They're destroyed. That's what destroyed means. Removed from the game completely. And that's a very great... It's a great card. Hunter Killer Drones are really, really cool. And they work really well with this. Same thing with this Scientist is ours. You must have, have active Hunter Killer Drones. Target arrival and attack with drones. Any hex holding either Dr. Anders or Dr. Lorenzo is active CN expats. This policy card counts as 10 extra ion for the attack. If successful, claim either of the CN expats and search the bidding deck for the Orbital Ion Cannon card and take it into your hand. So these two cards here enable 
enable battles to happen, enable combat to happen fairly fairly early in the game because they give you that 10 extra ion to make, to make it work. And you get the Hunter Killer Drones, which adds three. So even if you don't have any ion, you're going into the battle with 13 ion. So pretty powerful combinations you can create there. Um, now we move on to the orbital attacks. Orbital attacks are very, very interesting. They're devastating, but they have different things. First of all, we've got the not so inexpensive, well, not as, as, as expensive as the orbital ion attack. We have the orbital ion bombers, where we take a stash material cube from each rival. We can seal our target in our rivals and, and our rival civitas in our right hand. So you can seal your target rival civitas in your right hand and the rest of the players in the left and declare an attack. You check for defense. Now, checking for defense is does anybody have an ion dome surface defense? Now, the ion dome surface defense enables a civitas to completely protect their civitas. So pay for the policy via the above cost and place within any industrial zone. Then, when an orbital attack by a rival civitas is declared, in brackets that's the thematically detected you choose to diffuse spend three ion it is then the rival civitas's turn to state who their target is if you are the rival target your dome defends the attack if you aren't the dome if you aren't the dome depowers the ion remains spent this policy is infinite so this card has to be enacted you have to pay three 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 policy points four ion and four ether to enact it you flip it over and you stick it in your in your um, Civitas and it's it sits there connected to an industrial zone. Then you have to pay three ion if you wish to if you wish to launch the ion dome surface defense shield. So if that if that happens, you then have to spend three. So when that occurs, you say you check for de you check for defense, and then the 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 attacking orbital attack player reveals who they're who they're attacking in their right hand. And if it's you, you defend the attack and nothing happens. If it's not you, then the other player gets destroyed. And in this situation with Ion Bombers, the open hand is, is revealed on the right hand. If the target defended with the Ion Dome, nothing happens. If not, choose a hex and all resources are destroyed on the target hex. The hex and vital connected hexes deactivate. Rival loses one rep for every deactivation. Repeat on the next turn via this card's Ion cost. So you can pay the ion again, five ion, and do the same thing again to somebody else somewhere else, or the same person on a different hex. A really devastating attack, and it's something that you definitely, definitely do not want to have to have happen to you. So basically, if they attack the root zone here, for example, which is which would always be the the main target, I would have thought, unless you've got something else going on and you're trying you're trying to build an, an uh, alliances or there's some sort of plan going on on the table. Normally, the industrial zone would be the one that would be inactive inactive, and of course, all of these have to deactivate as well. They all disappear. Now, the resources, the resources. Um, what happens here if not choose a hex and all resources are, dest are destroyed on that hex the hex and vital connected hexes deactivate now that the resources that are on the hex that gets bombed so the industrial zone here they're destroyed the resources that are on that are on the hexes here they just come back to the player so they go back they go back to you you get them all through that's okay they come back the, the, the SPs go back into your CRC, that all happens, that's absolutely fine. But for every, for every facility and zone that deactivates because of this deactivating, these obviously return back to your hand, the hexes do, and for every one that does, you lose one rep for every deactivation. Okay, so it's a, it's a devastating blow and something you must always be wary of at the table. It's Big Brother. So this this ion bomber attack is it has a big brother and that is this one the orbital ion cannon orbital attack ion cannon seven policy points six ion and seven ether and there aren't many of these in the policy deck so it happens very rarely and when it does it's devastating take a stash material cube from each rival conceal your target rival civitas in your right hand the rest in your left and declare an attack check for defense open your right hand if the target defended i.e. with the iron dome nothing happens if not choose a hex and all resources are destroyed on that hex the hex and vital connected hexes deactivate rival loses three rep for every deactivation repeat on the next turn via this card's ether and ion cost so an expensive card an expensive move a devastating attack literally resulting in three reputation being lost for every single hex and zone that deactivates flipping nora 15 
15 rep you would lose if that was to happen. So it's these are end game attacks, these orbital attacks. When they happen, they are devastating. Okay, so that's it really for 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 combat. Remember, SPs that that, that attack, they take they take resources per the amount of SPs that you go in with. When you lose SPs due to attacking, all you have to do is re is re-add those SPs onto it. So you just put one, two on here, and then this one would then would then reactivate. No problem at all. You don't have to rebuild um, deactivated military facilities. You just have to restaff them. Three extra rules to bear in mind in, in regards to combat is something called draw overflow is one of the main rules. So draw overflow during combat is when players draw during a commitment of ion and they, they basically they, they match. So one person commits five and the other person commits five. When that happens, they don't add extra ion. They must commit ether and or material cubes in order to tilt the scale. The one who commits the most wins, but these overflow amounts are not claimed by the winner. Instead, all of the draw overflow committed resources are sent to the bank or to the inactive stash. Okay, so draw overflow is committing extra resources to the attack, material cubes and or ether. And when you do that, they go to the stash. Also, when defending an attack with a policy card and the defender loses, that policy card goes back into their hand. They are not destroyed or sent back to the bidding deck. And when attacking with a policy card and the attacker loses the policy card they attacked with gets shuffled back into the bidding deck so the attacker loses the policy card but the person defending with the policy card that loses that just goes back into their hand so if you were to ha and that's the same with regards to um, CNX pats that go into fights as well you don't lose a CNX pat they merely go back into the CRC if defending if attacking with CNX pats they're destroyed and yeah, that's it. That's it for combat. Thank you very much. Any questions, please leave them in the Kickstarter in the Kickstarter page or on the update or anything like that. Just just uh, pop us a line on Discord. We're always available to chat. And yeah, really, really happy. Thank you very much. That's combat. Thank you.